Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show I'm going to show you guys the process to go through to make a scroll saw basket. Now scroll saw baskets are one of those things that everybody sees and they're impressive looking and they think holy crap I can't do that but I'm going to tell you that they're actually pretty easy to do and the first thing you need to do is get yourself a pattern. Now I found my pattern online simply by googling uh, you know free scroll saw basket pattern and there's tons of them out there. So I just sort of randomly clicked on one and printed it up and, and the patterns kind of look like this here uh, which is a little weird but that's the way the patterns are. So the first thing you want to do is get your pattern and then of course the next thing is we're going to choose our stock. Because this is just basically a demonstration video I'm just going to use a scrap piece of pine that I've got sitting uh, over on, on the wood rack. So once you've got your pattern chosen and you've got your stock, the first thing you need to do is you need to put that pattern onto your stock. And for that you're going to need some spray adhesive. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a generous coating of spray adhesive on the back side of the pattern and then give it three minutes to tack up. Once the three minutes are done, we can rub it down onto our board. So our three minutes is up and this is all tacked up here so we're just going to take our pattern and lay it onto our board just like this and then we'll just rub it down onto the wood. Alright, pattern secure and now we'll move on to the next step. So the next step that we want to do here is to drill blade entry holes. And we're going to have to drill one at each one of these lines. Because each one of these lines is an interior cut. So in an inconspicuous place with a small drill bit, probably a 1 16th in this case, I'm going to drill a blade entry hole at each one of these peaks. But I'm going to move it around so I don't weaken the this is pretty thin here. I don't want to weaken this here so I'll drill one here and then I'll move over here and drill the next one and then I might go over here and drill the next one just to give it so that I'm not constantly going in the exact same space. Well I've drilled my blade entry holes and you can see I've kind of staggered them around here because like I said I didn't want them all in one line and then end up with uh, almost like a perforation here that would cause a weakness in the one of the or two of the rings. So with that now we're going to head over to the scroll saw and what the object is here is to cut out each one of these rings and we're going to start from the outer ring and cut it and then go to the next ring and cut it and the next ring and cut it and so forth and so on and <clears throat> as we go we're going to put them back together almost like a puzzle. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Alright, so I've got a number three reverse tooth bit installed here in the saw. And we're going to start, as I said, with the outside cut. So in your furthest, uh, your outermost hole, you'll place your blade through that hole, down through your table, just like that, and then reattach your blade and do yourself a favor over time practice doing that blind so that you don't have to always look under your table anyway once you get that blade in then you're going to go ahead and cut out the outer circle like I said this is a number three blade I mean, there is no rush. If you're not comfortable with doing uh, these kinds of cuts, 
And of course, just take your time. There is really no rush. ring, if you will, cut. So now we're just going to take this outer scrap piece, put it off to the side. You want to go into your next hole, just like that, and we're going to go ahead and cut along the next line. And then once you get that done, we're going to cut another one. I'll show you what I mean by putting it back together like a puzzle at that point. And then we're going to carry on to cut all the rest of these rings. Well, we've got that ring cut now and you can see that it comes apart just like that and what I meant was by keeping them or putting them back together like a puzzle was to keep them assembled like this just so that they all stay in the same orientation and it's much easier to work with a bigger piece like this than a small one so don't take this ring now and put it off to the side Use that ring to your advantage to give yourself something to hold on to. So with that now being said, we're going to move on to the next line in the rings. And I don't think you guys need a video of me cutting every single ring. So I'm going to go ahead now and cut the rest of these rings and then we'll come back and see you. Well, there's our basket cut and we've got to get this pattern off and every new scroller has a problem getting these patterns off and they pick at them and they pick at them and then they try to sand them off and you, they try to wash them off with mineral spirits and, and that works but I'm going to show you guys today the magic tool that's going to get this pattern off quicker than any other method and that is the heat gun. Let me just show you how this works here. You use the heat gun to heat up your pattern. And what this is doing in essence is releasing the glue. So we're just going to heat it up a bit and you're going to see this once it gets to a certain temperature, this pattern is going to start releasing. Do you see that there? Do you see that releasing? And you want to be careful here, it will burn your fingers. But the pattern releases so easily. Let me just show you this here. This is all in one piece. I mean, I didn't even have to tear it. So now let's do these other rings here. Heat gun. And all you really need is just an edge to start. See, there's that one there. So go all the way around. There you go. It's another ring of the pattern off. I probably heated this up enough to get the edge of this one started too. Yep. So just go with the heat gun. Now you want to keep it moving though because it will burn your wood. Don't, uh, don't fool yourself into thinking that it won't. So here we've got two of those rings removed. And I only just separated this just to make it a little easier for me to grab an edge here. I'll just show you, heat it up a bit, lift. There you go, there's another ring gone. Uh, 
and it does the patterns do remove that easily with the heat gun it's unbelievably quick and clean now you may need to do a little bit of cleanup uh, with mineral spirits if there's any glue residue on there and let me just caution you that if you do um, clean it up with mineral spirits don't do any sanding until the following day when all the mineral spirits have had the opportunity to evaporate because it'll make a gummy mess on your piece well now that I've got this much done I'm going to continue and get the rest of these patterns off and then we're going to come back and see you well once you get all these pieces sanded the next thing to do is assemble it and I'll tell you when you go to sand these keep it all as one big puzzle put together and sand them all in one shot don't try to sand individual rings you're gonna have problems if you start that so basically what you want to do and we can see that you know this is the way it goes together but you want to separate your ring and turn it slightly so that the patterns offset that way it gives just a little bit of an edge for this thing to grab on to and I mean as long as you've got a little bit of the pattern to hold on to you can put it together so that ring there just went on and then you turn this one ever so slightly again just like that and what you want to do is just apply a little dab of glue at the points where they connect you don't need a lot and just glue this thing together use a tiny bit of glue you don't want squeeze out if you want to do it so that uh, you can use less glue and a quicker drying time of course you could use CA and uh, CA glue would go a long way to having this go together quickly now I'm just doing this very quickly as a demonstration uh, I'm not going to get into gluing this piece because of course um, this particular project was only done as a demonstration just to show you guys how to do it um, if I was going to make an actual scroll saw basket I sure as heck wouldn't be doing it out of pine. Um, I'd be picking a, a much sturdier wood for this. But for the purpose of the demonstration, I mean the pine works just, just fine in this case. So as you can see here, each layer is placed on top of the basket, rotated ever so slightly just to give the glue something to bite onto and from there you just keep building layer by layer by layer just like that and then of course once you're done your top goes on your your final piece here and you would end up with this basket in this particular case, this could be a planter or a, uh, something to, to hold um, a potted plant or some fruit or, or what have you. But glue it together and uh, away you go. That would be your basket. And of course, depending on the thickness of the stock you use, that will determine the height of your basket. This is three quarter stock and you can just see how gorgeous that is. That really turns out nice. Uh, there you go. And there you have it. Scroll saw basket. Pretty cool. It's, uh, it's, it's a pretty good project and I mean it's a lot of fun. Total cutting time for me I, I think was something in the neighborhood of 20-25 minutes. Um, but it, speed doesn't matter. I mean go as slow or as fast as you want to go. Uh, just remember that the thickness here determines the height of the basket and you want to be careful of squeeze out as I've also said um, one other point to make about these baskets is finishing them uh, nightmare 
to try to brush on a finish. So guys, I would suggest a spray-on lacquer or a spray-on varnish for these. Uh, in fact, that's how I finish most of my fretwork or scroll sawing projects. Uh, it's just so much easier to get the finish on and make it uh, look professional without mucking around, you know. So anyway, there you go. The scroll saw basket. I've shown you the method. I've shown you how to do it. Now quit sitting around watching this video. Get out to your shop and make your own. Guys, thanks for watching. I'm going to see you again next week with yet another woodworking video.